uh, welcome. I hope we are uh, uh, we are live with you. Um, there are uh, apparently quite quite many people that have joined us uh, today for this uh, slightly weird um, COVID safe uh, handover of um, uh, our petition, or rather um, the, the mass response of citizens to the Commission consultation on uh, nature restoration. And uh, we are very happy uh, that um, uh, Commissioner Sinkevichus has uh, found time in his uh, busy agenda uh, for this um, public handover, uh, which allows us to um, symbolically hand over to him the, the big support uh, that there is uh, around Europe for the, uh, for the nature restoration agenda and for the upcoming uh, um, legislation that the commission will be, uh, will be proposing. Um, we all know at this point that we are in a climate and biodiversity emergency. Uh, our mistreatment of the planet uh, is coming back to haunt us. And uh, at this point, there have been so many scientific reports, so many public acknowledgements um, uh, that the case is, is an open and shut case. Um, and it's very clear that um, it's not just a question of uh, morality. Nature is beautiful and has been there for a long time and we don't have the right in one short generation to wipe it out. But it's also now very clear that it's a matter of our own survival as, as a civilization. Um, and I think that many who didn't want to see it until very recently have had their eyes opened by the, uh, by the pandemic. Uh, where it became very clear that when our relationship with nature goes wrong, everything goes wrong. So it's very clear at this point that um, the, on a dead planet, there can be no economy, no health, no well-being, no social justice, no, no society really. The EU has embraced it, uh, at least in principle, with the, with the European Green Deal and is trying to <clears throat> um, be a world leader in, in reversing uh, this, this situation. But we need real action. We are, <clears throat> at the moment, we are hearing a lot of nice talk, a lot of uh, faraway targets, but the action is not always um, uh, following. Now, one action that we urgently need <coughs> is restoration. We need protection. We need to protect, <coughs> sorry. We need to protect the nature that we still have, the last old growth forests and so on. But we have destroyed so much nature that we need to actually start restoring it. And restoring it essentially means giving land and sea back to nature. We are at a point where as humanity, we need to start taking some steps back in order to allow the rest of uh, the living world to take steps forward so that then the living world can provide us with those life support systems that we need. The ecosystem services, as, as, as they are being called. Um, but it's very clear that um, if we want to avoid floods and droughts and we want to have crop pollinization and and, uh, and, and pest control that is not entirely dependent on pesticides and so on and so forth. If we want to have healthy carbon stocks that don't go up in smoke, but actually accumulate and help mitigate climate change, we need to bring nature back. Now, we know how to bring nature back, um, among other things, because uh, in Europe, we've had 30 years of life projects funded by the EU, which have experimented and piloted a lot of this restoration work. And we will um, soon uh, see a message from uh, our Belgian partner from one of those sites where nature is being brought back, thanks to um, EU funding and thanks to the EU uh, legislation, the Birds and Habitats Directive. So we know how to do it. Uh, we also, oh, wait a second, not yet, <laughs> it will arrive. Um, we know how to do it. We have citizens behind us. 
uh, over 100,000 people actually bothered to respond to the EU consultation, um, showing that we have the support. And we have uh, a very big consensus among the NGOs about what needs to be done. We have here with us um, uh, Sabine from WF and uh, uh, Laura from EEB, but it's just, let's say, the three of us are a, a symbolic present behind us. There is a very, very wide front of many NGOs that have uh, tabled very concrete proposals together. Now, what are those proposals? What do we need from you, the commissioner? Well, first of all, we need a bold proposal that is legally binding, enforceable, can have um, can trigger immediate action. We don't wa want uh, the kind of the beginning of another very long, heavy bureaucratic process where we will spend the next decade defining definitions and, and, and so on. We want something that tells the member states what they need to do, by when and how, and send them on to actually uh, deliver. At the heart of it, we need targets for giving space back to nature. So we need hectare targets for how much habitats need to be um, uh, restored. Hectares in the case of land and sea, kilometers uh, in the case of river restoration, but we need hard numbers. Without hard numbers, we are not going to get real action. We've seen it in many other uh, domains. We need to restore real nature. And from that point of view, we are very ha happy with what is emerging out of uh, uh, DG environment in terms of focusing, first of all, on restoring um, habitats that are protected under the Habitats Directive. We need to make sure that what we restore is real high quality nature that is put on the path to achieving federal conservation status. We don't, we have enough fakeness in other areas. We don't want Sitka spruce plantations to count as forest restoration. Then we need strong governance. Just giving the member states a target and then coming 10 years later to see what has happened with it. We've seen it in, again in other domains, it doesn't work. So we need a, a solid governance with plans that get approved by the Commission, uh, with yearly or bi-yearly uh, monitoring, with correction mechanisms, with possibility to impose sanctions, um, monitoring. A lot of uh, restoration can today uh, be monitored from satellites, uh, and the EU has the best uh, satellite system in the world to do it. So we need all those um, delivery sites. The plans need to be science-based and done in open, transparent consultation. And it is in the plans that you can combine the hard targets, the numbers, with the soft targets like improving connectivity of Natura 2000 sites, uh, catering for climate adaptation, for ecosystem services, for all those other things uh, which are harder to nail in simple targets. So you need, you need the hard target and you need the soft targets and you need the governance that bring them together. We are also happy with the emerging proposals about bringing in other targets for, um, to try and improve situation in other sectors, such as agriculture, for example. So uh, we very much support the idea of having impact-based uh, targets on things like the recovery of pollinators or the recovery of farmland birds. Um, but again, uh, the heart of the legislation is really those area targets and they need to be bold. And bold means 15% of land and sea. European Parliament has asked for a lot more than that, but 15% is realistic, it's feasible, it's needed. That's where we need to go. Um, the last thing is, and on that, we know there are lively discussions uh, ongoing, but it's really important, is to ensure additionality. Uh, this restoration drive needs to come on top of the legal obligations enshrined in the Birds and Habitats Directive. Otherwise, it would backfire. Uh, if you start telling member states that what they should have legally done until now, they now have 10 years to, to do it, 
the risk is that the message would be okay. So for the next nine years, we don't actually need to do anything. So it needs to be very clear that the proper management of Natura 2000 sites, of protected habitats, those things should have happened by now. And you should actually take people to court when they haven't done it. Restoration both inside and outside Natura 2000 sites should be really about taking intensive agricultural land or plantation land or ex mining sites or whatever and giving them back to nature so that they can become in, in due time uh, good habitats. We really believe, Commissioner, that you can make history. We really believe this legislation is a once in a generation opportunity and we believe that it can be uh, a major plank of uh, both addressing the biodiversity strategy and addressing climate change. And we do believe that it can have an impact way beyond Europe because the people who do, I will not name any foreign leaders, uh, but uh, the people who do not want us to deal with the ecological crisis, one of, the, of their favorite uh, arguments is, you Europeans have become rich by trashing nature, and now you tell us that we need to save our rainforests as a way to keep us poor. Now, this is obviously totally wrong, and we see it all around the world. If you don't look after nature, you burn. Literally, we see what is happening in Canada as we speak. Um, but this has a certain resonance to it. So for the EU to show leadership at home and start giving land back to nature will make the EU a lot more credible in the CBD, in international diplomacy, in leading the way and asking everybody to do what everybody needs to do at the end of the day for the survival of everything. We'll now have uh, a message from our um, Belgian partner from an on the ground uh, restoration site in not very far away from here. Hi, Commissioner Sinkevicius. I'm Steven and I work for Natuurpunt. Natuurpunt is the Belgian bird life partner here in Flanders. It's always a pleasure to meet fellow nature lovers like yourself. And I thank you for taking the necessary action in developing a powerful and binding European nature restoration law. It is highly needed actually, because as we speak, nature is disappearing from our landscapes and our lives, increasing the impact of climate change and decreasing the invaluable ecosystem services. Here in Belgium, the past few years were actually very, very dry, causing severe problems to nature and also agriculture, and some places even encountered trouble with their drinking water provision. On the other hand, just a few weeks ago, heavy rains caused floods and even mud streams in the streets of several towns here in, here in Flanders. It would make a huge difference when a strong EU nature restoration law would oblige Belgium and Flanders to start restoring nature at a large scale in order to save biodiversity and mitigate the consequences of climate change. Today, I'm very happy to show you the Zwarte Beek Valley here in the province of Limburg. It's actually one of the most ecologically valuable brook valleys here in Flanders. Volunteers and professionals started restoring the valuable peatlands alongside the Zwarte Beek here decades ago. And in the past, excessive brook clearances and other draining measures caused extreme drought of these vulnerable wetlands, not only ruining the age-old peat layers here, but also destroying the specific and fragile biodiversity connected to it. In several subsequent restoration projects, we succeeded in raising the water levels again by bringing the clearances to a halt, filling out the drains, and letting the brooks meander again. Followed by appropriate management measures, the peat layers and the accompanying vegetation are restoring themselves as we speak. At the moment, 
we managed to restore about 450 hectares of an estimated total of 750 hectares of degraded peatland. So these peatlands, they will hold huge amounts of carbon instead of releasing it. And they will also act as a giant sponge in times of drought and prevent floods in the towns of Beringen and Lumen and even Diest further downstream. And this will be highly positive, of course, for local populations living here. Actually, a few weeks ago, I was here and I enjoyed the bleating sounds of the common snipe. And the rare spotted craig has returned uh, since we started restoring uh, the peatlands here. The bogs are, are full of sphagnum mosses again, and, and yes, we also dare to dream of common cranes breeding here one day in the future, perhaps. Dear Commissioner, imagine the benefits it would bring us all if we were to reproduce projects like the one here at the Zwarte Beek Valley on a large scale in the whole of Europe. Unfortunately, existing legislation has proven it is not enough yet to make this happen for now. Therefore, we need to make this law a strong and, and effective instrument to tackle the biodiversity and the climate crisis at once. So it could help to provide a safe future for both people and the planet. If you succeed in making large-scale restoration of natural habitats legally binding, we and future generations, future generations will thank you for that decades on. And we would be honored to invite you here in the Zwarte Beek Valley for sharing a good local Belgian beer with you to celebrate your achievement. Thank you. That's the voice from uh, the ground, and um, we will now um, virtually hand over um, the, uh, the the demand of the citizens uh, to you, Commissioner Sinkevichus, and uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and, and, and thank you of course for the video and sharing that as well, and and motivational speech in the end. And I, I, I first watched myself because I just opened it. So, uh, but um, so thank you very much. Um, clearly says the number of, of voices and citizens that, 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 that were engaged. And um, first of all, of course, thank you for, 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 for inviting me. And, and, and uh, I'm very pleased um, to see finally growing actually interest in, in, in nature restoration. I, when, I, when I speak with, with different stakeholders, I say that unfortunately, but with biodiversity, we are behind. We are quite behind, behind climate change, even so that the issues are equally pressing and you can't you know, uh, solve climate uh, without really addressing uh, biodiversity issues. And I would like to thank, uh, thank you all uh, Today, in particular, of course, BirdLife, EEB, and WWF for, for your continuous engagement in this matter, for raising awareness among the great public and, and encouraging citizens and, and, and stakeholders to, to raise their voice. And, and of course, putting forward today your vision on the nature restoration law. Of course, I would like to, 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 to thank Natur Pun uh, for, for showing that restoration can lead to, to, to great results. This is what we really need. Because I think this is not enough of those results being shown and, and, and understood. Sometimes it's mystified. And then, of course, people are hesitant of, of doing something they don't know. But, but I think it's, 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 it's nature-proof and future-proof solution. And, and of course, in this case, uh, for peatlands in, in Zwartabik, uh, Wally, so hope I will be able to, 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 to come there and enjoy that beer. Uh, but clearly, nature restoration is, is a key priority in, in our EU biodiversity strategy for 2030. It's, it's a huge task for, for decade to, to, to come, and, and nature restoration law 
will be the centerpiece to, to, to set the path to, to achieve the restoration commitments of uh, our biodiversity strategy. And not going to go through the details, I think uh, Ariel in his uh, speech um, underlined mo most important parts as regards what made us not to achieve the 2020 goals, which, which we had uh, before. But uh, clearly, the open public consultation on, 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 on binding EU nature uh, restoration targets that, that run until uh, beginning of April, it received more than uh, actually 111,000 responses, of which 104, that represents in your picture, came from the uh, Restore Nature campaign. And, and that's these responses, which you know well, absolutely dominated the results. And this high tar uh, turnout is, 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 is an important message in itself as it indicates the high level of, of public support for ecosystem restoration. And, and again, I can only thank you all for, and, and for, for that uh, uh, contribution. And, and the views of, of the respondents are well noted and, and are taken into, into consideration in our impact assessment. Uh, we will soon publish the, the contributions on, on the Commission's uh, better regulation platform together with the summary of, of the results. But of course, I'll use this opportunity to give you a little glimpse into some of the responses that were not uh, part of the campaign. We received more than 7,000 responses in addition to those from uh, the Restore Nature campaign, and 90% of these responses came from Poland and 55% of respondents indicated that their main area of activity was forestry. So this suggests that a very strong interest in the subject within these respondent categories, and it needs to be taken into account when analyzing the results. A number of uh, contribution uh, by these responses were in contrast to those of, 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 uh, of the nature, uh, Restore uh, Nature campaign, such as a high share of the responses were against the setting of legally binding restoration targets at EU level and against obligation on, on, on member states to develop restoration plans to monitor implementation and report to the EU. Strong preference was, was expressed for, for soft measures and, and, and financial incentives and for flexibility for member states to decide on restoration priorities and measures. A high priority was given to the restoration of, of marine ecosystems and to cross-border cooperation to restore damaged ecosystems in non-EU countries. And the majority of, of those respond, uh, respondents highlighted the need to anticipate climate change effects in the planning of restoration actions to ensure climate resilience. And by contrast, the Restore Nature campaign underlines the importance of establishing long-term monitoring and reporting and of designing, uh, designating um, uh, restored uh, as protected areas so that restored ecosystems are also kept uh, in the end of the day in good condition. And interestingly, um, a significant share of respondents view were similar to those expressed in, 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 in the Restore Nature campaign. For example, high priority was given to improving improving the health of ecosystems and the connectivity of natural areas as criteria to, to guide restoration efforts. Ecosystem resilience, uh, climate change mitigation and, and adaptation, uh, of course, disaster risk reduction, pollination and, and, and fish stocks maintenance were also considered important uh, criteria by a high share of respondents in, in both categories. In parallel, we, we also had four large consultation workshops with member states and, and other stakeholders. All these show broad support for that restoration efforts need to be stepped up. And this uh, makes me believe that overall, despite some political and economic interests that will always play a role, vast majority of you citizens agree about the huge role of, of, of nature in our lives and, and the need to restore its, its health. And, that, that might be also uh, impact of, of, of COVID where uh, many turned back to nature and, and, and realized it's, it's invaluable, uh, 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 invaluable value to, 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 to us and, 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 and the services which uh, nature provides that just cannot be replaced. So of course, everyone is curious about what's next. So with re regard to the next steps, uh, we have submitted the impact assessment report to our regulatory scrutiny board. 
and we are awaiting their decision. We hope to be able to launch internal consultation on a legislative proposal later in the year, after uh, shortly after, after uh, summer break. What I can tell you is that the proposal will focus on restoring a range of ecosystems, especially those with high benefits for climate change and disaster risks. And we consider specific targets for habitats, such as forests, wetland and, and, uh, wetlands and, 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 and marine, both within and beyond habitats listed in Annex 1 to the Habitats Directive, as well as targets for pollinators and soil. It's also important that we make sure that uh, the law is robust and, and, and proposes uh, measures such as reporting, uh, also monitoring guidance and financing to help its implementation and ensure a successful outcome. I, I think we are very much here uh, on the same page as I hear from, from your introductory speech. Uh, as a part of this approach, member states would be required to prepare national restoration plans outlining the restoration measures and, and, and other uh, enabling measures such as financing and stakeholder engagement. And in any case, we will continue our regular exchanges with the nature conservation community as well as with, with uh, stakeholders to put on the table a strong legislative proposal that can tackle the most urgent challenges. And of course, uh, we welcome uh, your continuous input uh, to, to, to ensure this to happen. So this is it from, from my side. I hope I was able to give you a, a glimpse of where we are heading. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, yes, I think you did. And we are very much encouraged by uh, what, uh, what we hear. Um, uh, I think you've been also uh, very upfront about uh, the difficulties ahead. Um, you know, the campaign orchestrated um, by uh, by the uh, Polish uh, state forest company uh, is is a taste of what will come down the road. Um, by the way, it's worth mentioning that um, you know the, the the people who are very skeptical about uh, le legally binding restoration targets. Um, well, some of them uh, are also uh, actively <laughs> illegally logging in violation of existing. Uh, EU legislation in protected areas. So, um, you know, we've, we've lost nature and we are losing nature for a reason. Um, and there is no doubt that there are, there is a minority uh, of people within many sectors that is actually making money from uh, destroying nature. And, uh, and for, uh, for us to take a step back and allow nature to, to come back, that actually means that a few people will need to make a little less money in certain cases. The point is that the benefits to society uh, outweigh um, those um, private costs many, many times over. And by the way, uh, the future of those sectors themselves is, is at stake. Forestry is an obvious one. Uh, we are seeing what, uh, you know, a generation of uh, planting monocultures and doing clear cuts and so on is doing to the forests. You know, uh, we see the heat stress, we see the, the, the increasing um, insect infestations, the fires, the very low resilience. So, Restoration is actually an agenda that is needed also for the health of forestry, of agriculture, of fisheries, where we know now that when you close an area to fisheries, you usually then end up fishing more rather than less. Though it might take a bit of, uh, of time to rebuild the stocks. So um, I would just close on saying, uh, we want to be fully behind you uh, on, uh, in this fight. And we think you will have a majority of European citizens behind you, but you need to put on the table something that is strong and credible and then that can excite people. People get excited about the idea of bringing nature back. People do not get excited about creating a process for sitting with the member states to discuss about further discussions and priority setting and so on. So, the more you will be courageous, the more we will be able to uh, gather the public support and help you win it. So uh, we are really looking forward to it.
make a proposal that we can fight for. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all of you that have joined us today. Um, and uh, and uh, of course, um, uh, we will be continuing the conversation uh, in, in private for the, with the commissioner to get into some of the more uh, nitty gritty uh, details. Um, there is a lot of hard work going on from the NGOs, from the commission, from many other people. But all of you that uh, have listened to us today, uh, you all have a role to play in your communities, in your uh, countries, in your professions, in your sectors, whoever you are and wherever you are, do help us and do help Commissioner Sienkiewicz get it through. Thank you and have a nice day.